Hello again, my friends. I'm happy to bring you another Silver Senior Silver Screen special biography on an old classic black and white movie, Mildred Pierce. But before we get started, please kindly take a moment right now and click that subscribe button and notification bell so you can be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Hi, I'm Lucy and this is Pancake. Thank you for joining us for another video. And if this is your first time here, a very warm welcome to you. If you haven't already seen this movie and love the old time classics like I do, I highly recommend it. And just in case you haven't seen it, please know there will be some spoilers in this movie. Well, I, uh, I wonder why you brought me here tonight. I mean, all of a sudden, boom, husband gone, soft lights, quiet room, opportunity. I love doing bios on old classic movies, so if you enjoy this video and would like to see more similar to this one, please comment below or let me know which one is your favorite or which one you'd like me to do a bio on and I'll try my best to do it. Also, please watch this video to the end to see some really cool behind the scenes photos. Some that you've probably never seen before. And I'm also including some interesting facts and trivia too. And so without further ado, through the magic of my computer, I've colorized some of the old black and white pictures from some of my favorite scenes from this movie which I find that you can see more details in that way. Please let me know what you think. You think because you've made a little money you can get yourself a new hair doing some expensive clothes and turn yourself into a lady. But you can't. Because you'll never be anything but a common... This movie is a crime drama film noir movie and it was released in the USA in 1945 and it stars one of my favorites, Joan Crawford. This is considered to be one of the greatest Hollywood comeback stories for Ms. Crawford. And some of her co-stars in this movie were Eve Arden, Butterfly McQueen, Anne Blythe, Joanne Marlowe, Jack Carson, Zachary Scott, Bruce Bennett, and others. It was directed by Michael Cortez, produced by Jack Warner, and written by William Faulkner. It won one Oscar in total for the movie and some of its cast, including Best Picture. The movie is about when Mildred Pierce's out-of-work husband leaves her for another woman, Mildred decides to raise their two daughters on her own. Despite Mildred's financial successes in the restaurant business, her oldest daughter, Vita, resents her mother for degrading their social status. In the midst of a police investigation after the death of her second husband, Mildred must evaluate her own freedom and her complicated relationship with her daughter. And now I've got some juicy trivia gossip for you. Michael Cortez was initially less than keen at working with, and I quote, has been, unquote, star Joan Crawford, as she had a reputation for being difficult. Cortez was soon won over by Crawford's dedication and hard work. According to Anne Blythe, Joan Crawford instructed her to actually slap her in the staircase scene. There were conflicts between Michael Cortez and Joan Crawford. He wanted her canned, claiming she was altering the look and interpretation of the character to make her more glamorous. 
There were the inevitable arguments over shoulders, with Crawford tearfully and not altogether truthfully, claiming her dowdy off-the-rack Sears dresses were unpadded. Cortez started referring to her as Phony Joni and also the Rotten Bitch. Laying into her mercilessly in front of cast and crew, Crawford wanted the director fired and replaced with a human being. <laughs> Monty's beach house used in the key opening scene and several others was actually owned by the film's director Michael Cortez. It was built in 1929 and stood at 26652 Latigo Shore Drive in Malibu. It collapsed into the ocean after a week of heavy storms in January of 1983. Anne Blythe remembered Joan Crawford as the kindest, most helpful human being I've ever worked with. We remained friends for many years after the film. I never knew that other Joan Crawford that people wrote about. After hearing exaggerated rumors about her behavior at MGM, Michael Cortez was unsure about casting Joan Crawford in the title role. However, she so badly wanted the role that she offered to do a screen test, something an established star was never expected to do. Cortez directed the screen test and after watching it was astonished and agreed that Crawford was perfect for the part. Mirroring her own life, Joan Crawford had also supported herself as a waitress and saleswoman before she achieved success as an actress. A huge hit, Mildred Pierce made more than half of Warner Brothers profits in 1945. Shirley Temple was originally considered for the part of Vita Pierce. And this was Joan Crawford's favorite of her, all her movies. Warner Brothers did not want to cast Anne Blythe as Vita because she was under contract to Universal and it would necessitate a loan out. But Joan Crawford coached Blythe privately for her screen test and after viewing it, Warners began negotiations to borrow her for the film. Anne Blythe was only 16 years old at the time of this filming. Jerry Wald acted as peacemaker during arguments between Joan Crawford and Michael Cortez. He recalled, I had to be the referee. We had several meetings filled with blood, sweat, and tears. Then everything started to settle down. Michael restricted himself to swearing only in Hungarian, and Joan stopped streamlining the apron strings around her figure and let them hang. On the restaurant's opening night, the theater across the street is showing Mr. Skeffington, made in 1944, another Warner Brothers film starring Betty Davis, who had turned down the role of Mildred Pierce before Joan Crawford was cast. The U.S. Navy granted permission to film in Malibu despite wartime restrictions, but asked to be allowed to view all footage shot there. In an interview with David Frost, Joan Crawford revealed that Michael Cortez wanted Barbara Stanwyck to play Mildred Pierce but Joan won him over after a screen test with her co-star Anne Blythe. When filming began, Michael Cortez mocked Joan Crawford's famous shoulder pads and accused her of having her assistants alter the store-bought clothes used for her costumes. By the time filming ended, however, she and Cortez had become closer and Crawford presented him with a pair of oversized shoulder pads as a gift. <laughs> Most of the leading actresses of the day shielded away from the role of Mildred Pierce because they didn't want to play the mother of a teenage daughter. 
Joan Crawford had no such reservations, knowing that it would be the part of a lifetime. So she campaigned vigorously to land it. Anne Sheridan, Barbara Stanwyck, Olivia de Havilland, Joan Fontaine, Rosalind Russell, and Myrna Loy were all concerted for the lead. In 1945, studio head Jack Warner went on a cost-cutting kick trying to cut down on extravagant expenditures on the lot. As an example, the mink coat John Crawford is seen wearing throughout this film was also used in another 1945 Warner's picture. The same coat was seen as the mink Elizabeth Lane portrayed by Barbara Stanwyck buys herself as a reward in Christmas in Connecticut in 1945. The brooch Mildred wears in the scene where she proposes marriage to Monty is the same brooch worn in Casablanca in 1942 and now Voyager in 1942. The brooch was owned by Warner Brothers made by movie jeweler Joseph of Hollywood. In the first and last scenes, Mildred wears gloves with big mink cuffs. Her mink jacket also has big cuffs, which must have made the sleeves very uncomfortable for Joan Crawford. Okay, these are some spoilers, and the following things I'm going to talk about, it might give away some important plot points. Actually, it's just one. So, Vida after Vida is revealed as the murderer and lead and she's led away, the detective remarks that they could use some fresh air, and then he goes and opens a window. And in California, uh, at that time, the method of execution was the gas chamber. And once the convicted person was dead, the cyanide gas was vented into the fresh air. If you like that one, we've got a lot more. Hotter than your morning coffee. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, I would greatly appreciate it if you would please kindly give me a like, comment below, share with others, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell to be alerted of every time I upload a new video. Please come back to see the next one. Until then, bye for now, and be blessed.